Welcome to the Student Pilot Podcast. My name is Simon Callis, a flight school owner. Each week, myself and my guests will be talking all things flight training and beyond to help inspire, motivate and support you on your journey to becoming a private or commercial pilot. Okay, so welcome to the podcast, everybody, and we welcome our friend and flying member, Iman. Welcome to the show, Iman. Hello, Simon. Been a while, hasn't it? It's, uh... Certainly been a few months, but it's nice to be back. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So um, we're talking about mental health in aviation today, and it happens to be Stress Awareness Month, I'm reliably told, in April. So it's, it's uh, a good time to talk about it, I think. Absolutely. So we're going to uh, discuss... Um, mental health in general and its effects in, in aviation um, and I think it's become more on everyone's radar since the German wings accident um, back in 2014 um, where 140 pe- 144 people tragically died and it's believed that the the pilot had, had committed suicide effectively um, sadly yes yeah so tragic event um, but it has kind of put mental health on people's radar which is the only positive to come from it so I'm not ashamed to say that mental health has been a battle of mine for many years after being diagnosed with depression in my early 20s. Um, it's had positive and negative impacts on my life. Um, I know it's had a part to play in your life as well, man, mental health. Yeah, I had my, my mother suffered from depression. And um, I mean, personally, I've been through a lot of changes. Um, and even though I'm not clinically diagnosed with depression, mm. but I've had quite a few ups and downs in my yeah. in my life, in my career, and yeah. uh, for various reasons. But yeah, I think there's still a stigma about mental health in this in this country, particularly. I'm not sure, you know, I'm not too sure about the rest of the world, but in like you know, USA, for example, um, if you haven't got a therapist, you know one. <laughs> you know, so Absolutely. I think um, you know. What's your views on that? So I think um, it's interesting when you when we discussed this before. I think part of the problem is there's this level of well there's stoicism that's yes. in in yeah. the uk and yeah. i think everybody feels that they've just got to crack on with it and yeah. keep and carry on you know that's a, a stiff up thing definitely <laughs> yeah. is whereas i think yeah. other countries are a little bit more open about it and emotional yeah. support is just just part of part of the part of the course and yeah uh part of the norm but i think in the uk yeah. we try and just keep swimming don't I think, we i think it's mad really because if you broke your leg Right, you wouldn't not go to hospital, would you? Absolutely, so the yeah. fact that the problem may be in your head is is irrelevant in my view anyway. But I think for a lot of people, just getting, you know, if you've got problems and you know you've got problems, don't ignore it, you know, get some help. And, and in terms of how it could affect your flying, um, that's what we're going to talk about today, potentially. So this is something that does come up regularly in medicals now. So the question is really, can you fly with mental health issues? And yes, you can. Yeah. Um, the short answer really is it depends on what the condition is and how it's treated, how it's managed, how it manifests itself. So we actually interviewed an AME about this. Um, if you want to see that episode, um, go to the uh, Student Pilot Podcast. There is an episode um, around pilot medicals in there. Um, we'll put the link in the show notes for you. But yeah, the, so the first thing to notice, uh, so the first thing to note about that is is that you will need a psychiatric evaluation. Now, that sounds quite scary, but it it really isn't. It's just a case of sitting down and and going through a series of questions and things anyway. Now, this was something that caught me out a little bit because I had several breaks in my training where I'd quit and come back to it. And one of those breaks was for several years where I'd previously held a medical, came back to get a medical and realised that actually my circumstances had changed quite a lot. And one of those things was mental health. Um, so that was almost like a showstopper for me, mm. you know, at the time I remember thinking, my God, I, I just can't do this anymore. Um, but it, it really isn't. So I think really what you need to remember is if you're in that situation, um, be aware that the process will take longer. So first yeah. thing is accept that plan around it and motivate yourself towards it. Because for me, the first reaction was, oh God, that's it, it's done, you know, can't do it anymore, but it's not. So don't dwell on it, motivate yourself towards getting that medical and get the advice of the professionals, the aeromedical examiner to help you go through that. And next benefit really to that is it it allows you time. Mm. So these processes are never, you know, just weeks, it might be a few months depending on the situation so you can use that as a positive thing and and go and get yourself ahead with a theory revision for example um the next thing is obviously other than the psychiatric evaluation if you are having treatment 
or that might be you know um, counselling or it might be actual uh, medication um, if you definitely with medication if you're prescribed medication it has to be on the list of approved medication if it's not then that's that can delay again so what the usual outcome is is that you would switch to a prescribed uh, medication that is on the CAA list of appri- uh, approved medications and then you would have a period whereby you would make sure that that works um, for your situation so I guess the the real critical thing that I'm I'm hearing here, Simon, is yeah. that you've just got to flush that out early on in yeah. the training, yeah, absolutely, and try and find solutions to yeah. to the fact that yeah. um, you have a, a diagnosed condition. But yeah. That would be true of any phys- physical yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, conditions that people yeah. need treatment for, don't they? So it, exactly. I mean, oddly <clears> enough, the the situation with me was one was mental health but the the other was actually medication not to do with the mental health treatment it was Mm. it was to do with uh, migraines actually so any even regardless of the mental health if you take any prescribed medication it might be non-compatible indeed so so yeah that that's something to be aware of as well so yeah i mean it's i think it's just a case of um you know getting the help early so you know what you're up against is, is the key thing there and in general, you know, in general, in flying, when you've got your license, I think you need, regardless of whether you're diagnosed or undiagnosed, you need to be aware of your mental health, don't you? Absolutely, and and that is something I'm very uh, conscious of, I suppose, is the yeah. way I would say it, because actually, we all have different people have different phases in their lives where yeah. they're actually. Um, Uh, struggling for one reason or another because they're going through some difficult times and actually where you are in your head matters a lot um, at that point in time yeah so I think you've got to you've got to kind of realize where you're at and you know if you're going through a particularly stressful point perhaps flying isn't on your agenda at the moment you know it's the end of the day you are you know when you've got a license you, you are pilot in command you are in you know in charge of that flight the safe operation of that flight so you know generally if i'm feeling low or um, i feel anxious i don't fly you yeah know, especially not by myself um so i think the key thing is always around safety mm-hmm. be aware of your triggers and avoid them if you're going to go flying so if you've got stressful situations in your life that you could avoid um then stay away from them just for your own health anyway um, that might be people situations you know whatever it is um, and you know if you are going to fly just be aware of your capacity I think is the thing yeah. and if there is you know if you're planning on doing a stressful flight for example as in not necessarily stressful but if you're going across country you know you've got to do several zone transits that kind of thing where the workload's going to be there you know if you, definitely if you're feeling a bit anxious it's not going to help knowing that yeah. you've got to do all that stuff so I, th- I think you've just got to be aware of your situation aware of your triggers and just work around it and if you feel that you know it might be a stressful situation you're in at the point you know either don't fly or take somebody with you that's yeah. competent that that can help you one thing we noted was that we had a particular student where the the kind of um the contributing factors from their work life were affecting their training to some degree and this particular person had a a high power job and they were notably um less competent on days they had come from work Mm. okay and it was it was something that a couple of instructors picked up on and we we got that student in and talked to them about it and they said actually yeah sometimes my head's not in it because i've just been from a really stressful meeting or either that or i'm preparing myself mentally for the meeting i'm going to have when i get out of my lesson and either way it's it's having a negative effect on that lesson so what we said to them was look either stop or find a way that you can um plan your flight training on days you're not in work you know and actually they did that and all of a sudden the progress was phenomenal Mm -hmm. they were like a different person Mm -hmm. you know and and they now need to factor that in with their own flying with you know their license now is that they know that it's an effect on them Mm -hmm. so and you know and by the way they're not they're not um as far as i'm aware diagnosed with any conditions or anything like that. exactly it's just stress in life in general has a huge you know this is just basic human performance stuff isn't it exactly um 
but we did see a remarkable um, change in that person's capacity and their ability just by adjusting their, their flying days, if mm. you like. Um, yeah, I don't know whether you have anything to... Yeah, I mean, I think it's, it's strange, isn't it? Because with flying, personally, I tend to use it to help with stress management. Mm. Mm. So it's a bit of a... An, uh, it's one of those things about finding the right balance, isn't it? Because yeah. on the one hand... Flying can be a real pressure release and yeah. and because it gives you, I think, perspective and because yeah. you've focused on the task at hand, yeah. you, it makes you switch off from the daily stresses of life. Yeah. Um, however, like you said, actually, if you're too stressed or yeah. if you do have uh, challenges and triggers, then you've got to watch that. It doesn't go too far the other way because yeah. that can be detrimental to your flying. So it's just finding, it's understanding yourself and finding that right, right balance and being able to be honest with yourself. If, yeah. if today isn't the good day to do it, yeah, absolutely. then don't, you know, or like you say, take somebody with you. Sometimes it can work to completely release that pressure, yeah. but it, you've just got to be mindful that it doesn't, like you say, all it takes is a couple of things like bad weather or a yeah transit that can make that increase the workload and therefore increase the pressure on the individual absolutely so. yeah and, and that's the thing is knowing your capacity as yeah. an individual yeah and what you what you respond some people respond really well under under duress indeed you like, but yeah. it can also work the the wrong way in the you know if you're feeling anxious then it can just be a load of problems that build yeah. up, you know um so yeah i think you've got to understand that and then like you said if you take somebody else with you who's a competent pilot and you know if you do get into trouble they're always there to help you anyway but it's, yeah. it's not generally i mean I, I sort of proactively say to people you know it's good to fly with other people but it's also a negative in some respects because yeah. i think you've got to push yourself as well you don't want people to be a comfort blanket if you like for you yeah. you want to be competent in what you do and i don't think you should over rely on other people to help you agreed sh- you know they should be there to help you if you need it you know um, but ultimately you are pilot in command aren't exactly, you? yeah exactly, and, and, yeah, and exactly. That, that, that's the way although i mean it's interesting because I, I know a lot of my flying friends they yeah. tend to quite often if they're going through um, and to an area they've never been before or if they're doing a Heathrow zone transit mm. or something like that they like to take a safety pilot with them yeah. who can do maybe the radio yeah. and then that allows you to concentrate on the actual you know a- yeah. aviate navigate uh, yeah. side of it so it's it's horses for courses but personally I find that the best I think you learn sometimes as well from flying with other people yeah. but really to really get the full benefit you've yeah. got to take it on um, yeah me, exactly you, so. and it's um i i like company when i fly is the yes way. yeah yes. That, you know that's the way i like to put it is that i like company not and it doesn't even have to be a pilot no, <laughs> you know that's you right know, yeah. it's just company so but that being said if you were doing a long route and you're going to get tired and stuff like that it's it. nice to have another pilot in case you think do you know what i don't feel like flying but you do that yeah and, Sh- is, sharing yeah. the workload i yeah. think that's one, one option isn't it but yeah. also always good to have pairs of eyes looking oh, out yeah. isn't it yeah. so my, my eyesight's in fact <laughs> on the aviator show it's becoming a running joke it's that it'll be like have you got the traffic what, what, what traffic oh, that, that traffic can, can it, spec savers you know every time <laughs> but you know it's um i think some of that is just you know you can't see what you you know you're looking too hard for stuff but <laughs> that's exactly it yeah. Yeah. um so let's have a look at some advice then for people who are looking to learn to fly that maybe think they have mental health concerns or or perhaps have diagnosed now i do want to stress on this episode by the way we're not offering you any advice that's professional advice this is just our experiences um, we are not doctors okay yeah. um but i think a lot of this stuff is common sense so if you are aware that your mental health is deteriorated somewhat or and, and you, you usually which is oddly enough is you're the last person to notice it i think which is bad mm-hmm. um but you know if if you have any mental health concerns you know go and see a professional go and see a doctor um and you know it might be that you do need some treatment or maybe it's nothing at all you know it might lot. be just a period of your life where yeah. you're really struggling because yeah. there's lots of things going on exactly um but that being said as we've just discovered is that maybe that's not the right time for you to learn to fly. exactly yeah. you know if you've got these outside influences that are causing you stress then perhaps you should deal with those first and then 
go and do it. Exactly right. If you do have any pre-diagnosed conditions, be aware, like we said earlier, that it may take further time, further advice, maybe even further tests before you can get a medical, or even if you can get a medical. So prepare yourself for any outcome. So go and see an AME, an aeromedical examiner, early before you start training. Um, you know, that way then, if you do have... Um, periods of testing or even having to have treatment you know it might delay you by six twelve months even but you haven't got yourself ready for your first solo waiting for that medical to come in okay. and then realizing that actually I can't do it um, so the key is get the advice early then you know what you're into um, you can manage the expectations you can manage the cost you can manage everything from that point forward mm-hmm. and I think w- one thing that's quite sad um, is that some people use this as the reason why they can't fly. Mm. So, and, and this is somebody I spoke to recently, I spoke to a guy recently, and he was just like, right, now I've spoken to you, I've, you know, I've got depression, I've got this, um, so that's me done. And mm. I'm like, you know, no, <laughs> no it's not. You know, you, you need to go and seek advice from a professional. You know, I'm not a doctor. Go and see a doctor, mm-hmm. an aeromedical doctor, and ask their opinion on it. And then you can see what's needed. Yeah. You know, and, and it might be a longer journey, but um, I think it was Henry Ford who said, if you think you can or you think you can't, you're right. Correct. Okay. And it's a great quote, but it's true. And to some degree, there might be things outside of your control whereby you know then it might not be a goer for you but you don't know till you try exactly yeah. you know if you kind of make up your mind already that oh yeah I've, I've got depression I've got anxiety whatever it is um then yeah you know you've made you've made your own destiny <laughs> you know but what do you so think so true I I completely agree and actually the benefits that you get from the pleasure of flying yeah. outweigh a lot of the effort that you have to put into it in order yeah. to, I mean, the learning process takes time, doesn't yeah. it? And, and investment. And actually the the positives that come out of it is just phenomenal. And oh, yeah. it's just worth finding out if that there's a solution to whatever yeah. the medical condition is yeah. first and foremost and then I think if that's if there is a solution just do it that would I think be my advice <laughs> yeah I mean it's life-changing opportunities 100 yeah. percent. do you know can I just add um sure. I took a little kid flying the yeah. other day he's three years old mm-hmm. um it was for his mom's 50th birthday mm. and the joy and the excitement yeah. this kid had and you kind of like we are so privileged to be able yeah. to do this sort of thing absolutely i would say definitely it's about finding a solution to how you can do it rather yeah. than giving up at the first hurdle i had um just that there was two people i know one of them was an old school friend actually and i still talk to her on social media but i don't i don't see her very often and um her little lads they they hadn't been on holiday abroad because they, they just, it, the finances didn't allow. So, you know, ultimately this, this little lad had never been on an aeroplane. Now I can relate to that because I, I don't think I, I think the first time I flew was when I was about 21, something like that. I thought, wow, I've got to help this kid to do this, you know. <laughs> so she was like, oh, I'd be really nice. You know, I love watching what you do on Instagram. And I was like, well, don't watch, come and do it, you know. And then she was like, oh, how much does it cost? I said, don't worry about that. I says, I'm going anyway, you can just come along. Yeah. So he took this little lad, I've still got photos of it, and his face, he was beaming, you know, and he hardly said anything. But when we got back, um, we used to have the JP here, if you remember the Jet yeah. Provost, yeah. and one of the guys there was just prepping it for flight. And I says, look, I said, Chris, this, this kid's only just been on his first flight. Can he go and can he sit in the jet? And he was like, yep, come up here, lad. Let's get you in, you know. Aww. And then he sat in this jet and it was just like, wow. He's just had the day of a lifetime, you know. <laughs> yeah. Apparently he still talks about it now. So it made a difference. And and the second one was um, one of the, the guys who used to work for me in a different business. His lad's got cerebral palsy, which is quite close to our heart here because Steve, one of our instructors, he's, yeah. he's got cerebral palsy. So he was like, oh, it'd be really great if we could get him on a flight. But nobody wants to take him because he can't walk. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, right, well, can you carry him? And he's like, yep, um, well, let's get him in the plane then. So he Aww. did. And, and then we put him in the cockpit afterwards and he was beaming. And, you know, and that, that for me, for, for, for me, it was like a reward that yeah. it was worth any amount of money. You know, it was great. Um, it gives you goosebumps, actually, it does, just yeah, hearing so that. I think yeah. 
that for your mental health just boosts you know boosts your your kind of happiness just helping other people I I totally agree and I think if we have the opportunity and we do and because we are so privileged I think it's about sharing that and 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 you know, you could uh, motivate and encourage yeah. people. And um, I, th- I think that little kid, or the kids that we were talking about, yeah. they could be the pilots of the future, they, for they all really we could. know. <laughs> and you know what? That's what I love about doing open dates and stuff like that, when you get the, yeah. the kids along, the parents along. I think that, you know, some of the instructors get a bit, with the trial lessons, they're a bit like, oh, it's just a trial lesson. But I'm like, yeah, but when you take the controls for that first time yeah that's you know i get to see them all walking back in here the expressions on the faces and and for some of them they you know they sort of over exaggerate how much they flew the aircraft if you like because <laughs> yeah. they don't realize what's happening with the instructor but for them that's what they believe happened and it's great yeah. you know and it's that that buzz you get when you first do it um so in talking about sharing experiences that was the whole point of this podcast really was mm. to motivate support and encourage people who want to learn to fly or are already doing it to reach their goals and and help them if if they're having bad times you know so, so i hope you're all enjoying it anyway <laughs> but, brilliant. Um, next thing i want to plug if i can a shameless plug here is our other show which we haven't launched yet it's called the aviator show you're already on it a man yes yeah, and so <laughs> the, the aviator show the whole point of that is let's take away the learning angle and let's just make it fun yeah. so the the aviator show is all about private pilots so so these are members these are other people we know uh, in aviation it's myself other, other people going on flights in various different airplanes just having fun we make mistakes along the way we learn from it and we share those experiences um so i know we've done one flight with you we've got other ones that we're going to potentially do in the future as well so uh, yeah please do subscribe to our youtube channel um at our Matt flying academy on there you'll get access to the podcast various other things that we do and when it's launched the aviator show so like subscribe leave us a review whatever you want to do please get on it let's see you on there and also we want to give opportunities to other aviators to come on the show okay so if you're a fellow aviator with your own aeroplane or even if you're learning to fly you could come on our trips with us share the experiences um so when we go to isle of Wight, places like that you can come along as a passenger or as a pilot um and let's just go and have some fun and record it. <laughs> Absolutely. That's Great it. fun. Excellent. So thank you for coming on the uh, show, Amanda. It's been thank a pleasure you. to see you again. Thanks, and, Simon. Uh, Lovely to see you again, yeah, too. And you. If you like this episode, please like, subscribe, and ding the bell to receive notifications of the next episode.